So again, thank you everyone for um, joining us today for today's webinar. We're going over CCC 860 forms. I'm joined here by Kate Bowen, who's part of FPC, and Joe Hoffman, who's with FSA, is going to help us just answer questions and give us additional information. Um, this is being recorded. Uh, it'll be on our YouTube channel, hopefully by next week. Um, but yeah, we'll go ahead and get started, Kate. Take it away. All right, thank you so much for being here and taking the time. So yes, we're gonna talk about the CCC 860. So this form is something that's often needed in a lot of different FSA programs. And it has a couple different pieces. So you could want to fill this out if you're in one of the socially disadvantaged categories, you're in a limited resource category, which has to do with your finances. Um, you are a beginning farmer or rancher, and you're a veteran farmer or rancher. So our session today is being recorded, as Diego mentioned, and will be available publicly on our Farmer Veteran Coalition YouTube channel. We have some previously recorded webinars, including information on the ERP2 program. Um, we have a bilingual ERP2 program that we recorded, um, and also one on crop acreage reports. And we're gonna be trying to do these every month um, so that we kind of get a good library going of FSA tools. Um, we also offer at the FVC technical assistance in over 20 different languages. So you would just call our main FVC number and um, request to be um, connected with our language line and we can help you out um, in a ton of different languages. Um, FSA materials are also available in many different languages as well. So the Farmer Veteran Coalition is spread out across the U.S. with our state chapters and our national office now located in Waco, Texas. We have over 30,000 members, and we have a couple of really neat programs that our members should definitely become familiar with. Um, they include the Homegrown by Heroes Marketing Program, which is a really neat program. We've used it on our farm, and it kind of differentiates your farm products from other ones on the market. So if you're at a farmer's market and you have, or you see the Homegrown by um, Hero sticker on a dozen eggs, or you see the Homegrown by Hero sign, your customers can know that they're supporting a veteran owned business. We also have a program called Market Maker, which is a connector between consumers and farmers. We have the Fellowship Fund um, and in our e-newsletter that all of our members should get, um, we feature a story of someone who has recently um, been a recipient of that program. Um, we work with Kubota tractors, um, tractor supply, and it could be someone getting a $500 gift card to um, getting a tractor, which is pretty amazing. Um, we also offer business planning and ag education. We also have our conference coming up in November, and there'll be more information about that shortly on our website. Our number's below. Feel free to reach out if you have any questions or we can help you with anything. So we have a number of people on this webinar today. Um, and we're going to be offering with Flower Hill Institute later on today office hours to take any of your questions. Um, we try to do this after all of our webinars, and this is a great opportunity that you are more than welcome to just hop in on the office hours and um, just ask your question and head out if you have to work. We know all of our farmers are bu really busy. Um, or you can stay for the whole hour, and um, we have an FS agent who will be on there as well, a specialist who can answer any specific questions, um, and just a good time to connect if there's any follow-up questions. If you're not able to make that, though, you can also always contact us at FVC, and we can connect you with um, finding an answer to your question. Um, on our FEC website, we've recently launched our FSA Digital Toolkit, and that's available. And again, we have the FEC YouTube channel that we house all of these previously recorded webinars on. So the CCC 860 is sort of part of a family of common forms. So these are often used for a lot of different programs. And what I always suggest is that you get this basic paperwork out of the way before you have some kind of awful environmental disaster on your farm or you know massive crop loss because of something. So you don't have to worry about this. Um, and we saw this with the ERP2 plan uh, program. Um, there actually wasn't a ton of paperwork as part of the ERP2 plan, but if you're a new um, customer, new farmer just working with FSA, and you have to fill out all of these forms and the ERP2 form, it does kind of seem overwhelming and like a little bit too much paperwork. 
So this is just something you can do at your leisure, get it out of the way. And um, the CCC 860 is also sometimes called the socially disadvantaged farmer or rancher um, form. And you may not have to do all of these forms, but um, good to just take note of them. And when you make an appointment with your FSA office and you go in, um, just ask them to get these common forms out of the way. So why would you fill this out? Well, there are a few reasons. Um, funding, eligibility, and crop insurance. Those are the main reasons. Um, if you've never worked with your local FSA agency before, um, I'm happy to help look up where yours is located, but you can also use the locator tool, which is on the USDA website as well. And you just put in your, um, your location, your state and your county, and it just pops right up. Um, and I think for the first appointment, I definitely suggest just from being a farmer, it's definitely best to go in in person for that first visit, um, meet who you're going to be working with, because things like crop insurance um, really are about relationship building, because there's going to be some interaction with that, and let them know what you're doing on your farm, um, because then they can also keep you in mind for programs that might be applicable to you. So again, there's sort of four parts of who might qualify for this form. So you've got socially disadvantaged group, which is gonna be um, racial or ethnic or gender prejudiced um, group. You have limited resource, which again is the financial group, beginning farmer or rancher, and then veteran farmer. And now for some of those qualifications, those things might change or they might not change. So if you're filing underneath the limited resource, so it, it's based upon how much money your farm has made, that may need to be updated, but um, for me personally, um, if you signed up um, for checked off the box that you were a woman, that's not going to change and that would stay in my FSA file. So you just need to know um, if that's something that's going to be changing over time or if it's sort of a stagnant thing. Okay, so again, you just contact your local FSA agent, give them a call. Right now, a lot of offices are really busy because there's some deadlines that have just come, um, just happened with ERP2 program and some other programs, but um, just call, make an appointment a couple weeks out and um, fill out those common forms, ask about other programs, be proactive, um, really let them know what you need, what you might want for infrastructure, ask them about microloans, things like that. Um, and also know that um, they recognize that farmers and ranchers are really, really busy and there are email and online tools available. But again, that first time really go in in person just to make sure everything is set up in place. Um, and it's really important while you're doing this form to also find out about NAP. So NAP is a type of crop insurance, and you're going to want to ask for um, information about the basic provisions document, and that'll detail all the program policies, um, how you would file a loss, and um, filling out an application for pain and other information. So the NAP piece is um, connected with this, and we'll get into that in just a minute. Um, but when you go in, make sure you ask them about that. So the NAP piece um, is really important, and that's kind of one of the three reasons why you might want to fill out this form is because you'll be eligible to receive basic level coverage or a 50% premium reduction on buyout coverage for eligible crops under NAP. So there's basic NAP, and then there's buyout NAP. So basic NAP, um, this is a really good program for new producers and new farmers, and um, they can provide all the details about how that works, um, but that's a really great program for new farmers and ranchers. And then if you're more experienced or maybe you inherited your farm, so your granddad has crop records and things like that, you're familiar with farming, then you might want to also look at the buy up nap. Um, and that gives you a 50% premium reduction. So both of these options um, connect with your CCC 860. And the other reason why it's really important to start um, communicating with your FSA office is because um, dates and your location are going to be different throughout the country and based upon what you're raising, um, what you're growing and producing. So your local office is really important because say you filled out this CCC 860 in December, um, you know, you might be able to get that spring crop in the NAP program, but 
if you filled out the CCC 860 in July and you're growing corn in Tennessee, um, it, what might be covered when might be different. So just depending on what time of year and where you are in your planting cycle, um, just it's important to ask questions about dates um, when you sign up for this, um, if you choose to sign up for the NAP, um, crop insurance. Um, so when you go and make that appointment, ask them what you need to bring um, to prove um, ownership of the farm, um, your production records, things like that. Um, but don't let that stop you from making the appointment. If you don't have those things available or um, you're, you're just unsure, I would still recommend making that appointment. And if you need to go back to the farm and um, take a picture of something, bring it back, I think it's just really important to get over that initial hurdle of calling your FSA office and starting the process. Um, so if that paperwork part seems really intimidating of things you need to prove or you need to provide, um, just go that first time and just ask questions and just get your name and address in and your, get a farm number going. Um, so there's a few uh, initial short, short, shortened things that are often in forms you're going to see when you start reading about the CCC 860. So sometimes um, they call it SDFR, so that's socially disadvantaged farmers and ranchers. You often see a term, and I see this a lot more in the NRCS documents, um, HU or HUFR. So that's just historically underserved. Um, once you start talking about the NAP crop insurance, you'll see RMA used a lot, and that just stands for Risk Management Agency. And you'll also see CAT coverage, and that just stands for Catastrophic Level Coverage, talking about crop insurance. So there's a really great guide on farmers.gov to go over some of this stuff. And I think where this gets confusing, or at least was for me when I started learning about it, is that different um, parts of USDA, while they're all still part of the same family, um, often define things sometimes a little bit differently. So for example, if you're a veteran farmer and rancher, so you're gonna sign up under that, which a lot of our members might, and you're working with FSA or NRCS, um, it's gonna count as anyone who served in the armed forces, including a reserve component and was re released from service under conditions other than dishonorable, and you qualify as a beginning farmer and rancher, or you first obtained your veteran status during the last 10 years. While if you're doing um, the crop insurance RMA criteria, it's a veteran status during the last five years. And um, so we've got the link in our chat for this and you can go over um, this a little bit more of the fine tooth comb and just look at your own situation and the nuances with your um, service. Uh, but it's just something to be aware of that different programs through NRCS and FSA may define things differently. So you can see it also, um, here's another one with beginning farmer and ranchers. So through NRCS, um, it's someone who's been um, farming for no more than 10 consecutive years. And then with FSA, it's no more than 10 cumulative years. All right, so I thought we would bring on Jill for these are the two most commonly asked questions that I found while doing technical assistance for the ERP2 program. So I'm going to use my family as an example. So Mark jointly owns a farm with his wife. That's me. He's a disabled Desert Storm veteran. They've been farming since 1999. Would he qualify as a veteran farmer? Go ahead, Jill. Well, Kate, unfortunately, he is not going to qualify as a veteran farmer. And that's because he doesn't, he just doesn't meet the correct criteria. Y'all been farming since 99. So that is more than 10 years. And uh, correct me if I'm wrong, but Desert Storm was 90, 91 time period. So that, that was more than 10 years ago that he received his veteran status. Yep. All right, and then we've got Brian was a Vermont dairy farmer, sold his herd and stopped farming in 2000. It's now 2023. He wants to start a pastured poultry operation. Does he qualify as a beginning farmer? We're going to assume that Brian has ownership, at yes. least 50% ownership of his farm, right? So the answer would be yes, because it's 10 cumulative years. So we don't know how long he operated from 2020, but he's starting over. So yes, he would qualify as a beginning farmer or rancher. Okay. 
All right, so now we're just going to go over the actual form. Um, the FSA forms are like many uh, forms you see, whether you're filling out taxes or uh, anything like that. And I don't know about you, but they can sometimes just look intimidating. So I thought we'd just break that down quickly. Um, in the chat, you can find uh, where you'd find this form. So you could look at it ahead of time and know what you need to, to prepare for when you go in the office. Um, but your FSA agent can also give this to you when you're at your initial meeting. Okay, so first of all, I just wanna encourage people that everyone on this call is smart enough to do this and can do this. And while I know filling out paperwork is probably not one of a farmer's highlight to our career choice, um, this may be a really important thing for your business. And so uh, setting aside the time to actually do it, I think is really important because I know how paperwork can just sit on our desks and we can just ignore it. So this is the first section. You just got to put in your name basically um, and your FSA office name. You're going to be sitting there probably with your FSA agent and they can help you with all of this. So we're going to just break it down piece by piece. So you're going to certify whether you're part of the first group, which was a socially disadvantaged farmer and rancher chunk. Um, so I would check woman on this one um, and you just have to go through and see if this was anything you qualified for. Um, Jill, if you qualified for many different categories, you would check all of all that applied, correct? Yes, ma'am. Okay. Um, this one's really important and there's a digital toolkit and we'll put the link in the chat. Um, and all you do with this digital tool is you put in your state and your county, and then it can give you um, financial information, economic information about what, um, what the qualifying numbers are um, in your specific area where your farm is located. Um, so this is just based if you're a limited resource farmer or rancher. And then this is if you are a beginning farmer or rancher, let them know how long you've been farming. And then if you're a veteran farmer or rancher, just let them know um, if you're, the first question more applies to being a beginner farmer and rancher. And then this is the most important piece that you're gonna have to talk about and see if it works for you. So this is the NAP coverage option. So this is the part that if you do um, qualify for all of those things on the form, um, you have the option of getting NAP, but you also have the option to elect out of NAP. So if you don't um, check this box, you would get the basic NAP coverage. Um, and so if you decide that you do not want to participate in that, you just need to make sure that you check that box. And if you have any questions hey, about this, oh, go ahead, Jill. I believe on that, um, if we'll go back to that form, if, you, if you're in year one or two of your operation and you elect to opt out of NAP, and the third or fourth year that you're still farming and you decide that NAP is a good option for you, you can come back into the office and uh, fill out just an updated form not and not check that box. So the NAP option would be available to you. And if you wanted to do the buy-up coverage, where would you select that? Or would that just be a separate form you'd? you'd... Yes, yeah. it's a separate form. It falls okay. under this general NAP category, but it is a separate form. Okay, great. All right, so just reach out to us if you have any questions. Um, and I'm going to also throw the floor over to Jill now. And uh, I highly recommend checking out this guide um, on the farmers.gov um, about getting started working with, with the USDA if you are in one of these categories. Um, and again, remember that you can also receive um, FSA information that is translated if English is not your preferred language. Hey, I think you did a great job. I don't have a lot to add. The Just remember that 860 is an optional form. You aren't required to complete it if you're not interested at all. Um, I did like the point and encourage everyone your initial visit to get started at the FSA office, make sure that's an in-person visit so you can meet the team and, and they know what your objectives are and never be afraid to call the office and ask questions. That's what we're here for. Awesome, thanks a lot, Jill. Yes, ma'am.
Diego's been watching the chat for us, so. Thank you, Kay, and thank you, Jill. Um, I've been throwing links the whole time into the chat, so feel free to just copy and paste those links. The links to help you find your local FSA office, links on everything that Kay has been talking about. Um, those links will help you just find more information. Feel free to also head to our website on the FSA toolkit. Let me put that in chat real quick. So that just includes more information about um, FSA um, resources. You can go to um, find information about like crop acres reporting, dairy margin coverage programs, disaster assistance funding, all kinds of things. And um, it also has links to where you, I believe you can reach out to people as well. But also feel free to reach out to us and do support. I'm putting that in the chat right now. Feel free to reach out to us for any questions, um, either support or even Kate can help out as well, answering these questions. Um, yeah, that's all I got, Kate. Anything else? Um, we did have one question, a couple of just coming in quickly. One yeah, was, yeah. Um, and all of the definitions for the terms that are needed for this are available through the USDA website. So I found them really, really helpful. So you can um, look in how the, the USDA um, has defined all of the different terms um, included in the presentation. And, um, and then another question that they wanted to know more about farm planning. Um, that would definitely be a question that our FVC phone number could help you with. Our veteran member services could could help you get connected with some resources um, and also check out the FSA toolkit. Um, what are the crops the FSA would most like to see new farmers provide? What would you say, Jill? I mean, I would say probably a lot of the urban agriculture, um, like hydroponic, a lot of the sort of small scale stuff is getting a lot of attention right now. Is there anything else you'd like to add? I don't think so. Urban ag is pretty hot right now. Um, <clears throat> we've seen an increase in organic interest in the last couple of years. And I don't know, I can't think of any specific crop or crop type to mention. We've had a lot of interest in honeybee um, production and programs, so we've become familiar with those. So if anyone is a beekeeper and wants to learn some about what programs FSA can provide, um, we definitely have some resources available for that. Yes, and if you're just uh, looking at the USDA website or the FSA website, farmers.gov is a good tool to use. Um, I would say look in the disaster program area on those websites that is most of our honey programs fall under the disaster program group great well thank you so much for joining us today i really appreciate it yes ma'am and then one last question that um that's showing up Let's see if i find it we're getting a lot right now uh, several have asked about what happens after you reach that 10-year mark after veteran status. So after that happens, what happens? What are they eligible for? What should they look out for? Stuff like that. And Jill, Jill you want to answer that one? <laughs> you you fall back into the general producer category at that point. Um, some of the NAP, NAP is, is the topic you've been talking about most today, Kate. Those um, initial sign-up provisions would be a little bit different. You may have to pay your NAP fee to actually participate in the program. Um, and some of the general programs, let me look really quickly. Possibly some conservation programs may change for you a little bit, the general um, eligibility status. And it's good for us to hear feedback if you would like veterans to be considered um, for you know your entire farming career. That's good feedback for us because we do at the FEC do some policy shaping and legislative change, and that's really good feedback for us so that um, we can connect with with policymakers and 
and politicians who um, who make changes for those sort of categories. So that's it's important for us to hear that if that's what um, you know our community wants. And also one more question, Jill, is um, disability, disability non-taxed income still recorded as income on these forms? That's a great question, and I really can't answer that question. I'd have to look specifically at that calculator tool that Kate provided that link for earlier. Okay, cool. Thank you. Yeah, and then, can, um, if you want to shoot me an email, we can definitely find that out for you. I'm at kate at farmvetco.org. Yes, I'm about to put that in the chat. Please continue on sending us questions through, um, through email. Uh, we will do our best to look for the answers to these questions. Some of these we just have to do a little digging, just more research on them. But um, that's about all the time we got today. Kate, do you have anything else to say? No, thank you so much for coming. Thank you all for the opportunity. All right. Thank you, everyone, for attending. Again, this has been recorded. It will be edited and hopefully on our YouTube channel within a week. So thank you, everyone. You have a great day.